So after you go through the cutscenes, this is where you are when you drop into the world of Ghost Recon. And that little uh, white circle with a line through it is Intel, and that's going to be really important to you because you can't get skills and whatnot without Intel. Before you can start playing, you're going to have to create a character. You're going to have to pick a man or woman and what the face looks like, scars on the face, etc., the hair. That can't be changed. The clothing can all be changed later at any time, but whatever you pick as a character is going to remain the same for the game. The default in the heads-up display does not have XP points turned on, and it helps you to tell how much XP you get for each thing you do. The yellow folder is major intel and lets you know of new missions to do in that area. There will be numerous missions in each region, and you're going to have to get yellow folders to open each mission area. Sometimes you can open a mission area just by coming near it in the region. So when you see the map, you're going to see the white circle with an exclamation point. You're going to, each region, you're going to need to get five of those. And if you don't see any, go to the nearest what looks like a town, and just go into the town and some will appear. I'm hearing those supply choppers overhead. With this info, I can find and grab one of them for the rebels. Engaging. Here I'm showing how to trap one of the uh, narco lieutenants. They're hard to get. You have to block them from leaving, otherwise it's a big chase scene. And if you hit the F button on the computer, your bots will fire at him, and eventually the car will get destroyed enough. So you saw him. I'm blocking his car in and c continuing to fire until he gets out. Then I can ask for intel. Here I'm going to a chopper location even before the game begins. And I'm going to get the chopper so I can fly around. Here I'm pressing H to put my guns away. And you'll notice he can run faster with his guns put away. So the first thing you do when you're going to enter an area is get the drone out and recon. You'll notice that I'm getting points, XP points, for each person marked. And that's why having the XP indicator on helps you. Marking a captain. Here's target number five. Besides, you're going to want to know where everybody is. The range of the drone is very limited without any extra upgrades. Here I'm lying down at the end of this wall to the left, and you can see I'm not hardly going 40 meters, and it's already running out of range. Hey, I found a Santa Blanca medal. This will make a nice souvenir. Get my first skill point, level one. Now, since you only got a 20 round mag, you have to reload all the time. Otherwise, you'll run out of bullets. And if you look on the minimap, you can see those little green signs. Those are resources. I should have kicked the door in and gotten them. But, I forgot. So here we haven't done any missions in Itakua yet. Didn't do the Amaru mission, and we got a helicopter. And now we're just going to start flying around and opening up other areas of the map. And you can see, because we got intel, there are skill points labeled around. You have enough weapons early on to be able to go and get them, especially if you go get the MG-121. When you start looking at your map, you can find that the skill points, if you hover over them, will tell you how many there are. It might be one, mostly it'll be one, but sometimes it's three and sometimes it's five, and you can be sure it'll be much harder to get the five ones. So we're going to look at weapons. You hit the I button and you get this screen. You have a lobby. You can add people to your squad or you can just continue playing solo. You have loadout skills. And in here I'm just showing that if you open up a particular gun, you can change all of the attachments on it. The gun will function completely differently when you change all the attachments. So, it's worthwhile finding a gun you like, changing the attachments, and seeing how they work compared to other guns. As far as assault rifles go, the standard one that you get at the beginning is a decent gun, the 416, but it's no comparison to the 556, or the AK-12, or the TAR-21, or numerous others. So, 
you have to experiment with them and find out which ones you like the best. And you have to spend a lot of time going and acquiring all of the add-ons, and it'll tell you which region they're located in. It'll say locked, you can't get it unless you go to some region. Well, you go to that region, get the intel to find out where the gun parts are, and you can get whatever you want. V2 compensator for the uh, muzzle brake, great. Don't forget to practice flying, because otherwise stuff like this will happen when you land. Skills are going to be a vastly important thing for you to obtain. Once you've got all the skills ramped up to the highest level, you're going to be able to do things that you can't do without them. Here we have the grenade launcher. Without a grenade launcher, when you have reinforcements coming with truckloads of guys, you're not going to be able to take them out. Ammo capacity, how would you like to be out there and run out of bullets because you don't have enough? Then you have v vehicle destruction, helps out with uh, blowing up cars and helicopters that are coming after you. Each one of these is going to take points and resources, and you won't be able to get them without points and resources. In items, you have parachute case you want to jump out of a plane, binoculars, mines, each one of these things has to be started. If you get just the lowest level in each one of them, you can get the epic skill at the end, and you'll at least have some mines on you. You can have uh, flashbangs on you, but you can see they aren't available until level 10. So until you level up, you're not going to get some of this stuff. Physical stamina is going to help you running and you're gonna do a lot of running in this game so if you increase the stamina level hitting H and putting away your gun is gonna make you run a lot better but the stamina is gonna help you to be able to run forever quiet running bullet resistance that's a good one to put something into like I said if you put one just one in each one of these things eventually you get the epic skill faster regen so the drone is probably the first thing you want to put some um, points into, and I would put range into it because you're going to want to be able to fly the drone farther ar around and be able to mark targets better. In the squad, extra sync shots because if you're going to be using sync shots, and it's a lot easier if you do, with uh, two, two leveled up in uh, sync shots, you can have three guys marked and your three bots can shoot them if you're playing with bots. Once again, if you have just one in each one of them, you could get the last thing, which in this case would be Medic Drone. Uh, Rebel Support. This is really huge. It comes in so handy. If you're going to use Rebel Support, if you do the missions that get you the vehicle drop-off, there's um, nine capable slots. If you did all nine vehicle drop-off places, and there's a whole lot more than that, but if you did nine of them, you could order uh, helicopters, armored cars, and and just regular cars. The first three are going to get you regular cars, the next three, so you would need four slots to get you an armored car and seven slots to get you a helicopter. Mortars. Mortars are incredibly helpful. They can um, knock out the targets you're looking at. If you have uh, a drone jammer, you can sit back with binoculars and, a, and hit the drone jammer with a mortar strike and destroy it. Spotting. Spotting is huge, and you can see on Power 3 it does a much larger area. So you get your drone really high up and use Rebel Spotting, and it marks everybody who's in there. It's extremely helpful. Here's an example of using the um, drone and mortar strike. There's a Rebel base nearby that had a drone jammer, so initially it was jammed a little bit, but I got away from it. Now you'll see a white outline. That's the area that it's going to be targeted by the mortars. And I hit the button, and it, the, the rebels do a mortar strike on there. And they are blowing up the submarine, which is what oh, the mission is. Oh, there's the sub. That's what I was looking for to do the mortar strike on the sub. That's right on, dude. Cool. I asked Pakatari to send us a vehicle. It'll show on the mini-map when you first spawn it. This is showing a car spawn. You look on the mini-map and it'll actually show up where it got spawned, but only for a couple of seconds. The spawn vehicle will also have the green smoke, but only for a few seconds. Here's the map showing how you're going to find vehicle drop-off missions. They look like little cars, and then in addition to that, the rebel spotting missions look like little parachutes. And then the guns for hire will have a gun and a head, and the... Um, Rebel Diversion has a running man with an antenna.
So this is an example of doing the rebel supply vehicle supply drop-off missions where there's always a big building like this with a whole bunch of guys in it. Unfortunately, you don't know where they are, and when you blow the door and walk in there, you generally get killed fairly easily. You can order your guys to shoot and order rebels to show up and help you, but they don't really do very well. This, me this method was uh, originated by my buddy, and in it, first thing you do is use rebel spotting with your drone to go high above the building and ID everybody in there. All those little red dots are where the guys are, so it helps a lot to know where they're at. And the second thing is you go around with a light machine gun that can penetrate concrete well and kill most of the guys through the concrete walls. It's actually amazing how well it works. So here we're going to see that I'm going to eliminate almost everybody in this place and then order my guys to fire when I go in, which is helpful. And I don't see anybody around, so I'm going to go down to the first floor where the computer is, hack it, and we're done. To defend a radio emitter, generally they're going to come in with truckloads of guys, and you want to put mines in the, in the roads that lead into the radio emitter because you're going to catch a whole bunch of guys in the trucks. You're going to get helicopters, you're going to get all kinds of stuff. You want to use an underbarrel grenade launcher to take out truckloads of guys, and you're going to have to be a good shooter. You have to find some place that you can hide behind and get cover because if you get shot, you can pretty much kiss off defending the radio emitter. I mean, your bots will help revive you, but you're pretty much dead at that point. You're only going to get full the amount of uh, resources if you don't destroy the, the vehicle. So if you destroy the convoy with a grenade launcher, it's go you're going to get half, and that's easy to do. It's just You just do everybody with a grenade launcher. It's very quick and dirty. But if you just shoot at it, and the health of the convoy truck gets down below about a third of its health, the driver will jump out. And once the driver's jumped out, the convoy you can tag the convoy. Another tip is when you're looking for resources, the ones you put tags in, if you aim down sight, it'll increase the area that you can see them at. So if you aim down sight, you'll get the little green marker showing up quite a ways away. In order to be able to fly in the parachute, you need to purchase it as a skill. I hope this has been helpful and everybody enjoys playing Ghost Recon because I know I do. <laughs> Thanks for watching.